Hey everybody, it's Lee here from Andertons and I'm joined today by Max, Senior Vice President of almost everything at Fender, but specifically guitars and amplifiers. Who knew? This was a surprise announcement. Yeah. Um, so we're going to talk about Tone Master Pro today. Um, you might be familiar with Tone Master technology at Fender, been used in um, guitar amplifiers for the last two or three years. Absolutely my favorite, favorite use of digital technology in guitar amplifiers to date. But I was not expecting to see the technology turn up in uh, a guitar effects kind of floorboard. So Max, it's good to see you again. Good to see you. Um, you have obviously been you know, one of the key kind of drivers of this product over the last few years of development. So do you want to give us a, a little bit of a, a rundown and then we'll dive into what it does and Pete's going to do some playing and yeah, have a bit sure. of fun. Yeah, great. So it's like you said, we've been doing the Tone Master amps for a while now and the whole mission for Tone Master was to make sure that Fender defined and was the authority on what a Fender amp properly sounded like in the digital domain. And then going beyond that and seeing how the world is changing and how more and more folks are using digital and using multi-effects to tour and to play and to record, we wanted to bring that Tone Master quality to a multi-effect. So not only Fender amps, but everybody's favorite amps with the Tone Master modeling process. So you get that same level of quality that we've been doing in those amps. And then on top of that, with all the effects and the models and everything, we said, maybe we could do it better where just like with a Fender amp where you have three knobs in the truth and it's really simple to get an amazing tone, we said, can we make a multi-effect that is also really simple that every guitar player can tweak and use just like they would their normal pedal board and their amp. And, and that's what we did. And we think we have an amazing sounding product that's really easy to use and really fun uh, to play around with. So let's go through some of its key, uh, the key elements of the product. So first thing is you've gone in at the pro end. Um, yep. I quite, you know, I, I assume the, the roadmap over the next few years will just, will be to see this kind of technology trickle down. But what was the thinking behind uh, going in at, you know, up against the, the big guys in this kind of, you know, you, we're going up against the, the, the fractals and the QCs and the, the sort of the higher end kind of helix kind of product. Well, for us, it was, um, you know, we have professional customers who are touring everywhere and they're, they're, they love their Fender amps. And, you know, cartage is a big thing when you're touring around. And the capability of, of having multiple amps and multiple scenarios, both in the studio and on stage, was really important. So we wanted to make something that could be used by professionals on the road, in the studio, at the same level at which they're used to with all the Fender products. And we also wanted it to be easy enough that anybody from a, a, a hobbyist to, to you know, a project studio user could also get in and use it without needing like a lab coat and a pocket yeah. protector to be able to run it, you know? Yeah. So, but because the modeling is so high quality, uh, it made sense for us to to create the feature set and the functionality that would serve uh, professionals uh, because it, you know, by, by starting at the top, we serve everybody all the way down. Now, let's kind of dive into, um, people will be familiar, probably have two bits of jargon in this kind of technology, but they'll be familiar with profiling and they'll be familiar with um, modeling. Profiling has a few different words, capture, um, that kind of thing, but you've, elected to go down the modeling route sure. um, rather than um, use a, a way of capturing a, a, an amp sound. So let, let's talk about, you know, what, why was that the preferred route for Fender? Sure. So for us, again, like the Tone Master modeling process is very intense. There's, um, you know, we spend just on a single channel of like uh, the EVH 5150, we'll spend three months. Uh, perfecting that. I mean, we're doing math that's like, you know, when, when the green channel and the blue channel are set at a certain uh, settings, we're discovering there's crosstalk between the two that influences both, and we have to account for that math. And so there's a ton of processing and a ton of math going on to make these what are as close to perfect replications as we can. But an amplifier has so much dynamics with your guitar, with the volume, all that stuff. When you're profiling, you're essentially making like a, a snapshot or a sample mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. It's like sampling with keyboards in the old days. And it can sound really great in its one state, but we wanted these to really feel and sound and be as dynamic as every Fender amp can be, and frankly, every other amp that we've modeled in here could be. So we feel like we're giving something by doing the modeling that's beyond what some of the other ways of capturing tones can be, so that you get the full breadth of what you would expect from an amp in the real world. Well, I think you're gonna hear in this video some bits of, of playing. Pete's gonna do some playing. I'll probably do some reaction kind of playing. You can obviously form your own judgment around you know, what you prefer sound-wise. I, I think it's fair to say this sounds amazing. There are profiling products out there that sound amazing. Um, you know, where digital is at nowadays compared to where it was 10 years ago is frankly astounding. What I do want to do in this video, whilst we've got you, is look at the user interface. Because yeah. I've got to be honest with you, that's probably where most of the top-end products, I think, fall down. There's an assumption that somebody buying a $1,500, $2,000 or pound unit will, as you say, put a lab coat on, read a manual that's like this big and just get yeah. into it. Yeah. And you've taken a, a route if I'm honest with you, it almost feels like there are some more affordable products out there that have, I think have done the user interface better than the pro end. Yeah. And you've, you've really lent into that and made it very graphical and very intuitive. So I love, okay, so can we go back to some sort of like, what, yeah, what's the basic, like what's our homepage almost look like? You know, what, what do we see? So like, this is like, if you, if you go to your basic presets, you can scroll through just like you would on a touch screen for your phone or your iPad. You can scroll through all your presets and see them by name. Mm -hmm. You can go to preset view and then you can see, like this is a massive preset. The stuff mm -hmm. that's dimmer isn't on. The stuff that's uh, lit up is on currently right now. So you have a, a list view of that. So if we go like to some favorites, you can favorite your preset. You've got your Fender, uh, you know, uh, stock presets that will never change. You know, the factory presets. You can go to cloud presets and you can upload and download presets in the future. And then you'll have song and set list mode eventually when we um, will come out with a firmware update uh, right when we launch that'll have a few more amps and a few more features. So make sure you do your firmware update when you get your unit. If we start with just like, let's, uh, you know, let's just grab like a deluxe reverb here. So I grab yeah, my, that. My favorite kind of rigs on these are what I would try to emulate with my analog rig. So I probably want a couple of pedals before an amp, a nice clean amplifier in the middle, right. and then a delay and a reverb maybe afterwards. So right, so with this, we've got uh, kind of a ro our royal tone ah, I uh, gain that. right there. Yeah, and then we've got a deluxe reverb. And you can see every time I push, on the effect or the amp, it zooms in. Mm. What's really cool about this, again, we want people to be able to intuitively use this like they would a real amp. So when you're editing, so you see your signal chain, right? And then right here we've got uh, the uh, space delay. So if I, right now you can see, here's the royal tone on the foot switch, here's the deluxe reverb to turn the reverb on and off, to turn the space delay on and off. Pretty typical how yeah. you would see the pedal board. But if I want to edit, it's like I push on the deluxe reverb and it zooms in and now you see all of your knobs. But what's really cool, because we have these scribble strips, we've designed foot switches that are also encoders. Mm -hmm. And so now the volume parameter is spilled to this foot switch, treble, bass, reverb. And now you turn the knob and it turns the knob just like you would on the real amp. I just, I, I, I'm, oh, I've done. 
yeah. I was just trying to see how do I, I, I was trying to see how intuitive is it? Can I plug my guitar lead into the second <laughs> input just by doing it? So not, not for this not, one, no. Not for this one, but look, so that's cool. There's no real lag here, is there? It's nice no. and easy to sort of see what uh, the volume controls are doing. And then you can, if you want, you can move it on the touch screen like you would expect. Oh, okay. So you can do this to it. And then we have another third way to adjust parameters where you can push it and it'll bring up this nice gradient That's so that nice. you can quickly, with a lot of resolution. So you have three ways to really adjust depending on I'm what glad, you're look, doing. The one, my least favorite of those three ways, and, and often on a lot of products, the only way to do it is that, right. which I kind of find sort of not a terribly intuitive way. I would much rather have that. Yeah. Or as you say, if I hit it, that's easier to do as well, isn't it? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, it's great. And so for certain things, you know, just depending on what you're doing, I always, I love the knobs. They feel so good. And it's, you know, no matter how good the modeling is, um, so much depends on how easy it is to yeah. dial in a tone. Like you can have a great sounding amp, mm -hmm. and if it's really complicated and hard to use, you can make it sound bad. Uh, so this is really important. I was uh, interviewing a, a lovely artist. Uh, you, I won't say names or stuff like that, although it'll be pretty obvious if you've watched the video, but he, he was talking about an experience. He's just gone from his analog amp rig over to a digital rig, and he's super happy with it. But he just said, yeah, I, I spent six weeks with the manufacturer tweaking the sounds to get it how I want it. And, I, and I'm just like, who's got six weeks right. to sit and not to sit with the manufacturer? You don't even get the option to sit with the manufacturer if you're just a normal human being. Right. You know, it's like, and I guess that's, you, you know, these products fall down the minute you're just it, option paralysis inside of going, where am I? You know, I, you need it to be like, yeah, I just want more bass on my Fender Deluxe. Boom, you know. I'm assuming we've got the overdrive pedal yeah. on here, have we? Yeah. <laughs> What's really cool is I'm in edit mode. If I want to go quickly to the overdrive, I just slide, just like you yes. would expect. I can go to all the different effects, or I can zoom out and I can just push it. And again, just like we did with the amp, the royal tones yeah. uh, parameters all change here. And then you can bypass it. And then now it's just the deluxe reverb. And we can turn the volume down. So i tell you what it is. What's cool is, I, th this is another really cool feature of the interface, because the impulse response and the cabinets and the mic, that's always a very complicated mm -hmm. thing for people. So we came up, you push on the speaker and you get this grid, which is super easy to use. So you've got your speaker here, mm -hmm. and then you've got four uh, instances of where the microphone would go. You have cone edge, cone, cap edge, and cap. Then you've got your microphone. So you push on your microphone here and you get your list of mics, just like you would expect with amps, right? So I could switch to like the 121 and I could go to cone edge and, and each one of these is a position like zero, half an inch, one inch, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. So it's really easy as you're playing, I can just switch through different instances in IR. So there's thousands of IRs in here, each one captured with that speaker that that's what that freaked distance. me out. So in the little five minutes chat I had with one of your colleagues, Jason, just before this, he was saying that each cabinet with each mic, with each of these different placements is an actual IR that's, that's right. loading in. Somebody has done that right. in a studio somewhere and captured it. That's which is right. Nuts. So something like 6,000 IRs out the box yes. before you've even done your first right. firmware. And they're all loaded else. at once, so you can quickly go through, and mm -hmm. that's the benefit of all the processing power that we have in Tone Master Pro, is, is and, they're all just there. And if that's not enough for you, you can load in your own IRs. That's right, you can use your favorite you IRs, well. you can put them in. Mm -hmm. They won't have this great positional thing because no. the IR will already have we'll, a position. Yes. But this is what's great, is that you have all of these different variances, and you can really hear a difference. Like if you play like just a chord, if I move this around. And if I go to like a uh, SM7. And then you have on and off access. And then I can, I can also do low cut, high cut filter. So 
you can really affect exactly yeah. how you want it to sound coming out of, and then you can, you know, which is great. If you're using like the cabinets on stage, like the FR cabinets, and you're going to front of house, you can have a different IR for front of house than you do, you know, right. coming into your cab. It's really, really the, flexible and useful and easy to use. The, the, the bit that as a guitar player, the, again, I'm not really, doesn't matter what I'm playing, and it'd be interesting to see how Pete feels when he has a bit of a play here, is the, the snap and the attack and the feel of these units is normally the most frustrating part of transitioning from right. analog to digital. It's yeah. a, the tone that comes out at the end is often, you know, impossible to tell the difference, but it's, you, you know as the guitar player this, that you, I often describe it as um, the sound, that, the feel rather of these is that you're hearing it back through when you're like a, a, a mixed final right, right. record. So it's, that's how it sounds fine, but it doesn't feel right. But this is feeling. Um, I'm, you guys are hearing this, by the way, straight DI out of here. I'm hearing it through one of the FRFR cabs that Fender have released to go with it, which by the way, are probably almost as cool as this thing is anyway, and we'll tell you about that in a minute. But do you just want to go through, um, we'll let Pete do the playing going through some of the, the different models and stuff like that, but why don't you dive over onto the effects side and just give us, you know, what are some of the more quirky things that this does that perhaps people might not expect? Well, I think what's really cool about this is how powerful it is. It's, uh, you know, to do Tone Master level amp replication like we've done in the amps, we needed to create a whole new architecture uh, that supported the processing power that we needed to do it. So in a Tone Master amp, you've got a, an entire arm, pro a quad core arm processor just to do the model, the convolution reverb mm -hmm. that we're using and the trem, right? So you get that 12 second decay and stuff, which you know has always been kind of reserved for your computer because you need so much yeah. processing power and RAM and all that stuff. So we've got that in here. So when we were going to be doing multiple effects and multiple amps and all that stuff and you wanted to set up your whole rig, we needed it to be really, really powerful. So mm -hmm. this is an eight core processor. Right. And so one of the really unique things about this is like you said, we've got so much processing power that we have seamless patch changes, all of the delays and reverbs just carry over and just like it does in the analog world. But what's really cool is you can put so much into one preset. And so like my favorite thing, like my preset, uh, which I call Max Twin Fried EVH, um, is literally like a bunch of different effects. Now this is all kind of uh, dim because not everything is on at once. So but I'll just cycle through. So we've got a wah on this one. We've got a phaser. We've got a chorus, right? Then green box, like a tube screamer, right? Then I have a twin reverb without the, we have, for the, for the Fender amps, we have the amp only without mm -hmm. the uh, reverb and without the trem, and then we've got them with so that you can mix and match. If you don't want them in the extra DSP horsepower on the mm -hmm. amp and you're doing something later with effects, you can do that. So this one is just the twin without, it's with, with the amp only. Then I've got the FBE 100, and this is all in the same preamp. And then mm -hmm. I have the EVH. And the EVH is really special because, of course, we work with the guys at EVH and we have for years and they really haven't been very big fans of modeling because mm -hmm. every, this is one of the most popular models that everybody uses and you know it, it's never been you know in their words good enough and so we came to them because we're EVH and we said we want to put the actual EVH label we want an endorsed version of that and they were like I don't know none of these really sound good so we spent like I said probably three months per channel on the EVH stuff to get it exactly right. And we brought uh, Matt Brook in to Scottsdale and we set up the real Stealth 100, the cabinet, the mic, all that stuff. And then we compared it to this with the FR cabinets and spent the entire day just going through and they were like, you know what, you guys nailed it. This is the best thing we've ever heard and you can use the EVH branding. So officially endorsed EVH cool. model in Tone Master Pro. So that's pretty cool. So that's the third amp in this preset. Thank you. 
And then I've got kind of a cool 80s style digital delay. These are really cool graphics that we've all done in house, so some of the graphics are really fun. Um, and then two delays on this, plus a hall reverb. And then I've got the cabinet at the end. So you're not using, is, right, so you're not using like the Fender Twin. You're just running all of these different amplifiers. I'm running all of these different amplifiers in into one a preset into yeah. a 412. And it's really cool. And then what I've done is on your foot switch, you can, you can be in like what you would normally see, which is like various presets. So we've got like I a see. rack twin, yeah. right? And then, at the, and then I've got the EVH. So there are six presets, bank up and down, like you would expect. Hold for tuner and tap tempo. And then you've got the looper. But I've also got this foot switch mode where I can go into effects. And what I've done with this, because I have everything in one patch, is I have a lead where I'm turning so like in this case, I've got the FBE 100, and if I hit, so play that for a minute so they can hear. Which sounds great. And then I, if I hit lead, it turns off the FBE, it turns on the EVH, and turns on this delay. hit it and I go back. So I've got this great way to toggle between. And then I've got a greasy lead which does the other delay and then adds the chorus here. Right, now I go back. And then um, the other thing you can do besides turning things on and off, so this is really cool. If you go to foot switch assign, it shows you your foot switches. And to, you just press it, and then you can have up to five different uh, parameter changes. You could turn things on and off like I've done, and if you go to multi, it'll show you little arrows, and you get to select which ones are going to be on and off. So whatever state they're in, when you push the button, it's going to go to the opposite state. So it makes it really easy, right? And then you can have parameter changes. And then you can do things like you can change the color of the knobs to red. You can just, so, so whatever color you want there, this could be like, um, if I go to, I'm in lead, so I can make that red, I can make that orange, I can make it, you know, whatever we want. Mm. And then what's cool about that is now I've got those, it's almost like, it's almost like presets within a preset, right? Like you would with like an old Bob Bradshaw or, you know, Dave Friedman, big pedal board kind of professional thing. So I've got all of that here and I can toggle from lead one button to my mm. lead channel increases the volume, gives me the delay, whatever. And then I can also change parameters. So with this FBE, if I have that on, it's when I hit crunch, it goes down to 25% gain. And it's less. And so um, let me just get back to my preset stage so we can see it. So if I'm like here, this is like my normal sound for that. And then I hit crunch and it's a little bit a little bit less. Less. And then finally on this, I have a clean setup where it, it turns off the FBE, turns on the Fender Twin, turns on the green box and the chorus, so I get this really cool clean tone. So you have all of that in one setting, and then I can also turn on the phaser and off. Good. I can turn on the chorus on and off. This is all in one preset, mm -hmm. so I can just seamlessly go through these, and live, I don't have to worry about anything. It's as easy as a real pedal board. And then, when, if you want to do other cool things, like I'm a really huge fan of Joe Barisi and the stuff he does with, you know, like with Tool, Queens mm -hmm. of the Stone Age, all that stuff. Well, he, he told me like some of his miking techniques, and I'm like, man, it'd be cool. A lot of times, what a lot of guys do in the studio is they put like a 57 and an SM7 together, they put it right on the cone. So what we did is we created, so that again, so it's super easy, we created different signal path types so that you don't have to think about it, you don't have to think about how you're routing. We've done all the thinking for you and we've put together parallel paths. You can do instrument, line and mic together so you can have two paths. You could do your vocal and guitar, you could do acoustic, you could do bass and so guitar if you, together. If you wanted a dual mic'd cabinet, 
are you saying that essentially you've got to ha you would have two cabinets? Right. So I would go. Right. So yeah. I'm going to I'm going to take this parallel one right yeah. now, which adds a parallel path. Confirm that. Yeah. And then what's really cool is you see it created this little parallel path. Yeah. I can now drag my cabinet right. over. I see. And now it's there. And now I can add just by add block. Yeah. When you add a block, what's cool is you get again combo amps, half stacks amp heads, and then you just scroll through whatever you want. In this case, I want a cabinet, so I'm going to get the same uh, Uber V30 cabinet, so they're the same. Yeah. And now... And then you just mic them differently. Now I just mic it differently. Yeah. So now I go to the other one and I can choose, you know, this, and let's, let's do, I, I think, let's, let's just be, have some fun, and let's use a 121. I'll do the low cut down to about 90, because that's about where that goes. Maybe make this about six, and go ahead and play it. <laughs> So now I've got that, and I'm on the clean channel, and now if I go back into the main FBE, it's really... You can hear that almost double track, it's kind of... Right. And what's really cool is there's always a mixer when you do this, mm -hmm. so I could pan them left and right, right, and I could and I increase the level. And then the clean channel sounds good. So it's really, it's, it, that's, that's, you know, because of all the capability, the processing power, and then the great sound quality with all this stuff, you can do just amazing things. Like some of the stereo effects are pretty, uh, pretty fun too. So like, this is like, and, and you know, the, the UK 30 amp, this is one of the hardest amps to model. Oh, and, isn't it? And, yeah. but we, we feel like we really Let's nailed see. it. Take the, yeah, take let's, the delay let's, off. let's turn that, all that stuff off. So I can just bypass like this. Sounded nice with the, put the compressor back, or the red, whatever that red pedal was that was back on there. It is a good model of that amplifier, isn't it? Because yeah. that's always, that's always the hardest one, I think, for modelers to do is, is the... It always reminds me of a funny story where I, I remember talking to a customer once who told me that he just didn't like the Vox AC-13. I'm like, well, you know, I know it's a tough amp. You've got to turn it up a little bit loud. You know, what have you used? And he just said, it's because that's the patch on his plug-in that he's got that doesn't sound very good. And I'm just going, that's not because the AC-30 doesn't exactly. sound good. That's because the, one of the, the patch that you've got just can't... <laughs> Interesting. And, and you get to just tweak it like you would. Yeah. Need a bit more gain to do that, don't we? Or something like that. Yeah. Um, I think hopefully what you've seen during this video is Pete playing through some of the presets and we'll just drop them in from time to time just to break up the chat. But we've, you, this thing really comes into like the pro domain when you look at all the ins and outs on the back. That's right. You've really thought of everything. Um, I'm not sure I've ever even seen some of the effects loops done in the way this is done. So can we just... Yeah, you so know, we've I guess got, you can see what's on the back. Yeah, we've here. got four effects loop, and the first two effects loops are are in the analog domain, so that if you're using like a traditional fuzz or whatever, and it just isn't going to behave well in the digital world, we've got those so that you can use all your favorite vintage and traditional stuff. And then the other two effects loops are in the digital space, and you can put them anywhere in your signal chain you would want to. So if yeah. you want to add like an H9 or you want to add like, you know, whatever kind of, you know, if you're into Strymon stuff, whatever, you can use it. And that's why it's really important that we made this small mm. enough that it could fit on a pedal board so that you can build your world around it. It can also, you know, you've got an amp out, you've got channels one and two out, so you can use the XLRs to go direct, you can use the tip ring sleeve quarter inch to go to your FR cabinets. 
And you could do four cable method, you can do wet, dry, wet. It's also a four channel recording interface. And the one thing I would, the one thing I would talk about with this that's really important that a lot of people don't understand with digital is to do great digital, you have to do amazing analog, right? So the reason the Tone Master amp sounds so good isn't just because of the model. It's because of what we do with the cabinet and the speakers and the impedance and how we, how we drive the input sets and all that stuff. So the hardware here is a key component mm -hmm. to why this sounds so good. So we're using really, really high end converters. We're using really high end analog paths. You know, we have extra capacitance around the power supply so you get the transient response. So you're getting like a super high end professional converter quality mm -hmm. interface uh, for that too. And then if you just push for the mixer, you have a full mixer here. So we've got headphones output one and two, and those are all like linked. You can just um, move them here or you can unlink them if you want to and just control one. And then USB one and two, if you're using the USB-C connector, is connected to the wet so that you can get all your your stuff into the thing. USB 3 is dry so that you can do reamping or wet dry stuff. And then 4 is for this extra combi jack input in case you want like to do vocals or acoustics or whatever. So the, anything that you would ever want to do with Tone Master Pro is here and nothing you really don't. So. I mean, I, again, I'm just pulling things out that I'm seeing features you're going on. You've got Bluetooth on here. So what is that for set, uh, streaming or editing? So or eventually really? when this comes out, there will be a um, companion uh, app Brilliant. on your for Mac and PC yep. that will that's called uh, Tone Master Pro Control and it and it really replicates exactly what you see here there will also be uh, a tablet and mobile version of that so that when you're on stage and you have your iPad on your mic you can do it and you'll be able to use that for Bluetooth you can also Bluetooth your phone to it and you can play music through it and because the FR cabinet sounds so good yeah the replication of like your your music through it and stuff is great I've, I've actually used the FR cabinet uh, connected to uh, my TV and, and listen to them it was like I mean, an amazing uh, hi-fi experience in the house uh, so. I, I love that and I know Pete loves this as well I love that it's got the internal transformer so you're just yeah. using an IEC cable again completely voltage um, what do you call it, where it detects it, yeah. so it doesn't matter where you are in the world, yeah. as long as you have voltage. That's right, <laughs> as long as you work. have the right connector, yeah. you're good. Um, like you say, that the, the XLR input, so can either be a second instrument input and a completely discrete signal path, or you could put vocals or acoustic instruments through it. Right, so like, um, as an example, um, I've got here an acoustic and vocals patch, and so what I've done here is, the top patch has an acoustasonic amp and its own set of mm -hmm. effects. And then at the bottom, I've got a mic line where you can plug in vocal That's mad. and it's got its own effects. So mm -hmm. I can turn them on individually. So I can, now I'm managing my vocal channel here and my acoustic channel here. For, so for singer songwriter, it's mm -hmm. super easy to use and you can just do it. And then you could have, you know, you could even have your singer do this. And mm -hmm. you know, as a guitar player, you can control the singer and mute him whenever or her I, whenever you I've want. I've got to say, it, it really does feel like, yeah, I mean, like, I know you guys are the Fender guys and everything like that, and Anderson's is, you know, a little bit more impartial about the brands, but it, it really does feel like you've lent in and taken some of the best bits of what some of the other brands have done um, and combined it together. Interesting move. I mean, I, I think, the, I think there's a, the general public here will need to come try this. There's, there's I think, modeling as a as a technology has um, so much, there's so much kit in the affordable domain using their version of modeling that it maybe gives uh, the whole thing a slightly bad name. Mm -hmm. uh, so I kind of feel like um, I've not experienced a sense that this doesn't feel right or feel real. So it's quite an interesting education for me as well because I think I was in that camp of like profiling is right. good modeling is bad well not bad but not as good but <laughs> I think my perception of that is changing yeah it's really um, the opposite it's like it's kind of like um if you do the modeling right mm. it's just harder to do because yeah. you're asking you're asking the device to give you way more information and make sure that that information is how you would expect mm -hmm. it to be in the real world. So it becomes r much harder. If you're mm -hmm. just doing a profile and you're just capturing one instance of what that's supposed to sound, it's only going to do yeah. that. But yeah. you're not going to be able to roll the volume like you can on this. So like if yeah. we go back, this FV100 sound.
going to give you a shout out here because normally I hate noise gates. And for this amount of gain, you almost have to have a gate on it because otherwise it, but you get that sort of, you know, when you're playing soft and you get that like <laughs> sort of noise. Right. I hate it. So I'd rather have the noise than no, but. Yeah, and with this, you can turn the noise gate down to, you can have a, a low but noise leave gate. Leave it on that, because it wasn't, or wherever, low, because it was like. I mean, I'm really low on the guitar volume here, mm -hmm. and I've not yet <laughs> sensed the noise gate thing. And again, it's it's about it's That's about good. being really smart yeah. about how it senses input and stuff yeah. like that. And then when you crank it back up, so you you would have to profile like all the different instances of that amp, and then switch patches yeah. instead of like you know a fender. Yeah, no, I get that. Yeah. I so, mean, I, I guess to be you know to to give the, those guys their due, you know that obviously the EQ does still work on sure. profiled amps, but Absolutely. what you're saying is it's like an overlaid EQ rather than right. the EQ of right. that amplifier. And it's just a different approach. Like, yeah. you know, uh, mm. what those guys have done over there is incredible. It's a great mm. product. All of these products are really great products. It's just, we, we mm. felt like with this one, we have so much experience yep. with these that we wanted to bring all of our things that we've always wanted it to do and what customers have always told us they wanted to make it well, as good as we possibly could. It's what could. technology does, isn't it? It's right. just, you know, you get four or five players in the technology domain and they're all driving each right. other forward all the time trying right. to make the products better. That's right. Well, you know, the Palm Pilot was great until the iPhone. Yeah. Out, you know, <laughs> like. Now, to finish this up now, I guess the, the, the other critical ingredient when you're listening to uh, a guitar amplifier is the speaker that you're listening to it through. Right. And we learnt, uh, we learnt through our video studio that, that it makes an enormous difference upgrading from affordable studio monitors to slightly higher end, more sort of pro end monitors. And, right. and, and actually, that alone changed my perception of how good this kind of gear could be. Yeah. But there is, I think if you're a guitar player, there's never really a substitute for feeling like, you know, your trousers are flapping a bit and That's right. a proper bit of air. So, of course, the, the, the FRFR cab is a draw, but I'm still, I still feel like when you listen to this kind of gear through a PA cabinet, it, it just something is lost in that kind of, so I, I like it when brands try to do dedicated F FRFR cabs, you know, when guitar brands try to do FRFR cabs, right. I think they get a better handle on it. And I suppose now being completely um, superficial, I just don't like it when they don't look like a guitar cab. <laughs> well, you know, we all feel that way. So Absolutely. it's like, I want to know if I'm on stage trying to look like I'm playing through a guitar cab, I want it to look like, Absolutely. you know. So I don't know, I hope you can see these on the camera. But you've got two FRFR cabinets now that are you know, really from the front, just like look like Fender amplifiers. Right. So can we talk a little bit about the two FRFR cabs and how they're different and what the tech is inside those? Sure, so we've got uh, a 10 inch and a 12 inch Tone Master FR cab. Each have a thousand watt power supply because for, a, for an FR and a full range, and you need a lot of mm -hmm. power to get the SPL, that pant flapping mm -hmm. sound that you want. But <laughs> you know, that's one of the things that we were really keen on is like, you have to have a really good replication of what you're trying to do in this at the reference monitor stage. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're going to lose and you're going to have lost. Some of the things that we're doing that are magical in here will get lost in translation. And so we, being that we make amps, you know, 70 years, 75 years of amps and all that kind of stuff, we really have a good sense of how to do that right. And so the, the cabinets push a lot of air. Uh, they sound good and they replicate exactly what we're doing in Tone Master Pro as accurately as you possibly can. So what's really cool about Tone Master Pro and what we were talking about with the hardware is by using really high quality analog section and converters and stuff, what comes out of this translates how you would expect to the FR cabinet, to the headphone output, 
right, and even to a PA, and of course your mileage will vary with the PA, but mm -hmm. you know, it's not gonna be exactly the same, but you will be able to have confidence that you're not gonna need to retweak everything no matter how you program it. So a lot of companies kind of um, save money on the headphone output, for example, and then if you do a bunch of programming with headphones, mm -hmm. and depending on your headphones too, then all of a sudden you go to your FR cabin and it doesn't sound right. And so we wanted to make sure that in all instances you got that. So when you're using the FR cabinet though, what's really great is there's a three band EQ on top and a cut so that on stage, if you need to make a quick tweak, you've got this great global EQ like every Fender amp in history to just quickly dial things up and you don't have to go into like, you know, a bunch of menu diving to try to get your sound right. Which again, the spirit of this whole thing is make it work exactly like it does in the analog world for people. Superb. Just on the subject of portability, how much do these Tone Master cabs weigh? Well, just like the Tone Master amps, these are super light and easy to truck around. So you're not gonna break your back like you would on a tube amp. It's, you know, in the, in the 20 to 30 pound range like you would expect an amp Excellent. like that to be. Well, just to wrap up, if you thought that there wasn't anything else that Fender could have done to have made this more guitar friendly. They've even made it the same weight as a Strat. <laughs> I mean, come on. Anyway, look, it's great. It's good to see you, Max. It's Thank you for taking you. us through. Um, really looking forward to getting this back to the studio, putting the, the firmware update in it that's going to have when it's brand new, um, and just using it because it's. I really have enjoyed playing it today. So thank you very much for inviting us down. Thank you guys for tuning in. Links below to where you can find out more and buy this stuff, uh, <laughs> most importantly, uh, will be in the description below. But yes, thank you very much for tuning in too. And yeah, check one out yourself. It's very, very cool. Thanks. Thanks, everyone.